What's up, folks? Welcome to New Report. This is Lewis, and this story came to my attention uh, via Down the Rabbit Hole News, so I want to give credit to her. That's where I saw it first. Uh, it is this woman... Uh, Natasha Ramos, she's claiming this was posted a week ago, at least the first video was posted a week ago, that uh, she wants to talk about what happened to her, uh, because I guess she's the actual singer or lyrics of Jenny on the Block, and she's got some stories about the producers and stuff like that, but I wanted to go over it with you all and, and, and uh, see what's going on. Now, in regards to like music and stuff like that, there's always a lot of borrowing from um, other uh, songs and what they do, the music industry, what they love to do is get songs that the current generation forgot. Uh, Jenny on the Block is a great track, but it samples, uh, it samples the beat, um, what is it? Uh, the Beat Nuts, uh, Watch Out Now. That's the beat of the actual song and that's what makes it actually good. But a lot of people don't know that. So, yeah, I could have sang that and it could have been big because the beat's so so good. But anyways, let's see what Natasha Ramos has to say. And uh, let's go over this and react to it uh, together. This is all fair use, folks. A YouTube human reviewer, fair use, in effect. Natasha Ramos via TikTok. Okay, you guys, so I just got off work and I was going to come on here and be like, hey, I see your responses. Thank you so much for the support, blah, blah, blah. I know you're eager and anxious. She kind of looks like JLo, right? Now, I have to comment over this to make it fair use, guys, so. Yes, I'm excited and I am too, but please have patience with me. I have two kids, two toddlers. I got two jobs. I'm a server and I sing. So, like, and time is fleeting. Um, and I was going to try to just, I don't know, do it tomorrow while I'm looking crazy in the house with my kids. Um but I'm going to just try to try to start the story now. Right. Um, I'm sure that there will be another part coming at some point uh, if I don't get to everything tonight. And if you have any questions, please feel free. Head over to her TikTok. Okay. I'm Natasha Ramos. All right. So I don't know what year it was. 20, I mean, 20, 2001, 2002. I don't know. But I had the opportunity to sing a reference track for Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer from the blog. Uh, a, you know, a, God, a reference track for Jenny from the Block, for Jennifer. A lot of people say she stole the song from me. She did not steal the song from me. That song was written for Jennifer. Okay. It's called Jenny from the Block. Like, clearly it was for her. Um, so I recorded it. They, you know, they shopped it to her. She loved it. She loved the background vocals. So I guess they had her sing it, but they didn't want to make her popular. They wanted to make J-Lo popular. Yeah, that's how it works. We've seen that with singers like, I believe, Martha Wash, who has the voice, and then they put in another singer who fits the look, the appearance they want. And that's how fake the movie, the music and movie industry is. And that's why it pisses me off when I see people that are so starstruck with some of these things. Well, she, you know, they told me they wanted to keep me on there and they wanted me to sing background vocals on some more songs on this album. Uh, excuse me. So I did. Okay, that was a massive burp. <laughs> um, so she did go into the studio and record some background vocals over mine. Um, I am convinced that they turned her vocals all the way down because it sounds almost identical to the reference track. Wow. So the reference track, once again, is a pitch. One thing I did not know that they were going to do until after the song was released was keep my laugh. Like the laugh you hear on the song, that's my laugh. Like the laugh that you, when you're watching the video and there's a laugh and she laughs in the video, that's my laugh. Um, the person saying from the Bronx, that's my voice. And they kept an ad lib. And just for the record, ad libs are not background vocals. Ad lib is 100% a lead vocal. So let's just leave that there for a second. Okay, so in regards to the negotiation and all that stuff, I 100% take accountability for the fact that I was not well versed in the business aspect of the music industry. Um, I was young. That's true. That's what they say. The and all uh, like, especially the entertainment industry, your first contract is your worst because you have no idea 
what you're doing. You don't have the people in place to, to have your best interest and you want to make it, you want to make it out there. So you're desperate uh, to sign. And it, unfortunately, usually the first one is the one that's a hit and then you never come back. I was impressionable and uh, my manager was trash. Okay. Mm. My manager was just this random dude from Connecticut who happened to be really good friends with the producer that, whose uh, who's production company I was signed to at the time. Um, but because he was so close to him and this producer like had been in the industry, I figured he knew what the heck he was doing. Um, now, I wasn't in the room for the negotiations. I wasn't in the room for any of that. Uh, after I finished recording everything for Jennifer, it was time for me to record my own project and I remember that they were like, oh, it's urgent for you to finish your project. So Marcus is going to go and he's going to negotiate the contract and blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming, honestly, so much time has passed by that I, there are certain details that I don't remember. Mm. But I will say that in order for somebody else to be able to sign a contract for you, there had to be some sort of like power of attorney put in place, right? I don't know. But that's the only way he could have. All I know is that, or all I remember is that I was in the studio recording my own my own stuff. He came back from this meeting and he tells me, um, I got you three thirty five hundred dollars. Thirty five hundred dollars for Jenny on the block. Well, maybe J Lo did right and paid her the extra. Let's see. Hey, what? You do know I recorded backgrounds for five songs on this album. And so he got fired that day, literally that night he was fired. Um, and I wanted to fight it. I was like, there's no way we have to be able to renegotiate. And I remember the answer I kept getting was the contract is already signed. So you can't renegotiate, but you know, it's okay. You take the 3,500. Sometimes, sometimes you have to, you know, take less. It's for other doors to open for you. Like that's how it was sold. That's the way they do it. Like, yeah, you're only getting $3,500 for all this work you did. That's going to make her millions of freaking dollars. But you know, maybe for her next project, she'll reach out to you for background vocals or, you know, yada, yada, yada. And me being young, I'm like, all right, I guess like, sure. Um, but off rip felt like immediate resentment immediately felt disheartened and heartbroken and, and shitted on. Um, hold on. Okay. You guys, okay. There's a part two. Let's uh, check that out. What do you guys think so far? Let me know in the comments. All right, you guys, I am here to finish the story. Um, I'm not a content creator, so like, am I supposed to introduce myself? <laughs> I don't, a lot of y'all don't know who I am, so I will anyway. I'm Natasha Ramos, and I'm the voice of Jenny from the Block. Um, so, like I said, I was not in the room when the negotiations were happening, and um, I have thought to myself over the years, like, I wonder if Jennifer knows I got paid so little for all of the work I did on her album. And she probably just doesn't care. I really hope that she doesn't. I really hope that she didn't. But also, I'm pretty sure she was in the room. Uh oh. Uh, Natasha, so am I. I'm pretty sure she was. So, there's that. But I will say that I know for a fact that there was this one person in the room negotiating. And I know that this person was very powerful in the dealings of this album. And I had a situation with this person, which, um, you know, I think that I think, you know, well, let me just tell the damn story. <laughs> Do so it. this was Go my girl. last day recording and, um, the way that the studio was set up was like you go into whatever studio, you open the door, that's the control room. There's another door that leads to the booth, but this studio had multiple booths in a booth. So like the first one was like a lounge area for the booths. The second room was like the booth for the instruments and the third room was the booth for the vocals or something like that. But the first one was definitely like the lobby area. Um, so as I'm coming out of the booth for the last time, I am met by producer Corey Rooney. 
you know what? It's 2024, year of the revealing. Why not? Mm. Ugh. Um, so I was met. Hold on. Wait, also, before I get into this story, I just need to say I told a handful of people this story and a couple of them know the full the like the full story. The others only know half. And this was in an effort to not be judged. I didn't tell the whole story. So here it is. Here we go. I just need to toss this in here, too, that while I was in the process of recording all of these background vocals, there were other dreams being sold to me like, oh, you know, we're working on a TV show about Jennifer's life when she was about your age. And, you know, we want you to play her and da 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 da. So like now I also have this like, oh, shoot, this is another amazing opportunity I'm about to have. This is another door that's about to open for me because of what i'm doing here um okay honestly i think telling this story is stressing me out because i have hives <laughs> i'm getting hives um so anyway Corey is at the door tells me what a great job i did is so proud of me and then he asked me for a kiss and i'm like what do you mean <laughs> you know just a little kiss i say no He's like, if you don't give me a kiss, I'm going to take you off all these records. At which point, gave him a little tap kiss. He says, no, I want tongue. I said, if you don't let me out of this room, I'm going to scream my fucking head off. And he let me out. And all these years, I can't help but feel like that was a big piece in why I was screwed over so badly. Wow, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know Natasha. I don't know the producer, but I I believe this is possible. Actually, a couple of years ago, um, somebody reached out to me about there being a documentary produced about the making of Jenny from the Block and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it or said that Corey wanted me to be a part of it. And I was like, sure, because at this point, Finally, I'll be able to reap some sort of benefit from the work that I did. Um, we had a Zoom call with a few people who were involved and Corey was one of them. And it was very, very awkward for me um, having to pretend that what happened didn't happen. And like, yeah, it was 20 years ago, but still, it still happened. It still affected me. It's it's still wrong. Um so yeah, it fell through the cracks and I'm assuming it fell through the cracks because networks didn't pick it up because Jennifer was also working on this new documentary at the same time. So yeah, never got that opportunity. And um, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I definitely was also trying to figure out how and when I would expose Corey. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. It was a lot. It was a lot. But I'll be back because I'm hungry AF. I didn't eat breakfast trying to get this story finished for you guys. Um, I don't know if there's more to the story. If you guys have questions, let me know. But I'm about to eat breakfast. And if I think of anything else, I'll come back and do a part three. That was Natasha Ramos uh, on TikTok. I don't know if there's another part to this story. Let's see. Two, three. Um, hi, everybody. Um, it's me again, Natasha Ramos. With Whoa, the voice there's of more. Jenny from the blog. Um, I am on my way to the gym, but since I'm in the car and I have a moment, I decided that I wanted to answer a question or two. I wanted to start off with this one. Um, now, I know that there are a lot of people who hate Jennifer, dislike Jennifer, are mad at Jennifer, whatever. Thing is, like, Jennifer Lopez is like, I don't know, she's kind of a snob, bro. Sorry. All right. Uh, if you're expecting this to add fuel to your fire, it's not. Also, disclaimer, I am not a... Uh, a content creator i don't know the do's and don'ts i also don't care about the do's and don'ts i'm just here to tell my story so also i think i have some sort of like undiagnosed adhd so i may or may <laughs> not be all over the place deal with it and if you don't like it you can keep scrolling 
also there's a part one and a part two and there is also a precursor video so if you want to watch all that to get caught up before you start all right this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go live on nerd report we're gonna talk about the situation so you want to subscribe right now uh to talk about it live well i don't know maybe i'll i'll, I'll send natasha an interview uh, uh an invite to come on here if i could get a hold of her um uh yeah so what do you guys think so far there seems to be more uh videos here make sure to follow natasha ramos i'm dot natasha dot ramos what do you think of the story it's quite possible nerd out